from tomorrow here, Nairobi, of course, hosting the world in a three-day conference. And my panel has patiently as well waited to have that conversation. Uh, Peter, let me start with you. The 2010 Kenyan constitution uh, divided the country to 47 counties. I wonder what the role of individual counties is in as far as the preservation and the point you alluded to of conservation is of the blue economy is, is concerned. Um, first of all, devolution has created such a huge role of counties in our country. The county government has its own county policies, its own way of doing things, its own way of implementation. And even from my experience of working with different county governments, their role in not just empowering the youth but in conservation of their water bodies is monumental. Without the willpower of the county governments, without them being involved in the conversation, we're not going to move forward in implementing any of our ideas or our dreams. So I believe the role of the county government, whether the policies are not there, whether they need to be um, strengthened or created, this is why the conference is happening. And are the county governments buying the idea of using blue economy as an economy on its own? Yes, I can tell you right now in two ways. One, within the Sustainable Blue Economy Conference, there is a governors and mayors event where governors and mayors from across the world are converging at the Blue Economy Conference. And this is actually the first time in, 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 in many conferences, because many conferences are on the presidential level. Mm -hmm. But now this Blue Economy has, has seen the importance of the county governments to bring them on board. And also the Mombasa County and the coastal counties are very much buying this idea with the Pwani, um, Jumia County uh, Pwani uh, economic block coming together. Fair enough. Let me get to Elizabeth. Elizabeth, what often is the connotation between the youth and blue economy? Where do, do the youth at all stand a chance in, in a blue economy? Um, absolutely. They do stand a chance in the blue economy. But I believe uh, why they are not aware of it per se is lack of awareness. The, the, but let me speak of the opportunities first. There are so many things that uh, factor into the blue economy, shipping and port facilities, for example. That is an area that can be tapped into from the seafaring industry where I am in and to, to operations department, the handling of these uh, cargoes when they get into the port. There are areas as, as fisheries whereby they can, be taught, they, can, they can learn harvesting of fish and, and the, economic, the economic benefits of of uh, fishery and we have tourism actually tourism looking at cruise vessels being one of the largest uh, service industry that feed into the uh, tourism sector we see that tourism really contributes largely into the GDP of the country and looking at cruise vessels you find that the age bracket that is allowed there is between 18 and 35 most of the time when it comes to ratings and when I speak seafaring I don't necessarily say you have to know how to navigate the ship on cruises we have stewards we have bartenders so the opportunities are very vast but I, I believe that uh, yes that we have taken the step in the right direction with the Fair conference. enough. You, you made mention of yeah. various opportunities that exist in as far as youth being able to exploit these chances. Absolutely. But many at times, the information does not trickle down yes. to the large populace that is made up of the youth. Who is supposed to create the awareness? I think uh, one of the things that I have felt is paramount towards uh, uh, making, it, making the young people aware of the blue economy is if the education uh, system in Kenya could actually put in a maritime maritime as part of a subject into the primary or, or, or secondary education level because at that time we are able to be aware of what is there and, and the opportunities that are there other than just leaving secondary school and all we know is that we want to be a doctor or a lawyer and I, I, I do not sound, want to sound like I'm insulting other jobs. <laughs> but Fair enough, we can be yeah, all lawyers yeah, and doctors. Absolutely. Fair, fair enough. Uh, Willis, Kenya loses up to 10 billion shillings annually to illegal fishing. Yeah. Of course, we have seen cases of imported fish as well in, into the country. I mean, what kind of an economic impact can this have if at all we utilize the opportunities that the blue economy presents? What kind of an economic impact will it have? Thank you, Abu. I'm looking at a scenario where if those, that much money that we are losing, we spend it inside the country. Kenya will not be where we are now. We'll and when you say we spend it inside the country, what do you mean? Within the development of our country, our infrastructure, our various aspects of our country. But from where I am, I would say, we, have, we can go a very big way in trying to make sure that 
we harness and we develop our own resources, the water resources within our country, so that we utilize them uh, sustainably, so that we can be able to earn. We stop importing and selling out our money. We raise the fish. We raise whatever that is marine, water related. We do everything, every production aspect that is related to the water resources internally. We stop taking our money out. And the best way we do that, we use the resource that we have, the human capital that we have within our country, which is huge, which is vast, which is agile. And does this human capital include both skilled and non-skilled? Both skilled and non-skilled. And when I talk about the human capital, both skilled and non-skilled, I'm talking of the large part of our population, the youth. If these ones, if we engage our youth in all aspects of blue economy value chain, because they can fit in at very different points. Mm -hmm. The moment they fit in, then we are sure we produce more, we sell out more, so that we turn our youth from being consumers mm -hmm. to producers, active producers within our economy. Thank Talking you. of the youth, let me get to Peter. Peter, how do you then make blue economy look seductive and intuitive to young people? Thank you for that question. Um, while he was speaking, I was just thinking about the language we use. Right? When we're talking um, to youth, especially within my line of business, is that we're talking about the language we use. When you're asking a youth, what are your dreams, what are your aspirations, and, you, and they say there's no opportunities, and then you tell them there's so many opportunities, you need to ask them, what opportunity do they want? So we need to find a way to tailor make the blue economy to fit the needs of the youth. As much as we say youth, we're not going to give you on a silver platter. You need to go out there, you need to hustle, you need to work hard. But it's also, we need to make it accessible. So I feel like the way forward, especially with the Blue Economy Conference and with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and, and different partners, we've created a youth event at the main conference of the Blue Economy, mm -hmm. where young people can come and then share their recommendations of what they feel their role in the Blue Economy. Because one thing I can tell you, when you're dealing with young people, many of the world do not know what we want. So it's time for us to stand up and shout out and tell the world, what do we want? Where do we see our role in blue economy? Take those recommendations and then push for implementation. Fair enough. Elizabeth, you are Kenya's first. Let, let me get to Elizabeth before I get to you. You are Kenya's first female marine pilot. I want you to talk to me about the gender, whether there is a gender imbalance within the blue economy as well. How is the gender situation in as far as blue economy is concerned? Um, I have never shied away from being vocal about this, but the, the gender imbalance is absolutely disheartening when it comes to the maritime industry, rather the blue economy. Looking at the field where I'm at is uh, the seafaring industry. We see that on female seafarers form 1 to 2 percent of the entire workforce, which rounds up to about 1.25 million. We see that the recent uh, statistics that were put in the maritime report, we see that um, 75 percent of a, a larger 75 percent of the ladies or rather the women who are in the maritime industry are not exposed to the, the better policies or rather the more conducive uh, areas for them, more conducive environment for them to be able to be working there. So you find that they shy away from this industry. But again, I say that uh, with better placed policies and, and us continue being vocal about it, change will come. And with the Blue Economy Conference having a side event for women also mm -hmm. and, and youth, uh, believe, I believe will bring in a, a, greater, a greater feel for them to understand. And, and why is there a disparity? Is it that women do not want to venture into the blue economy or the industry is a gated one, more manly? Um, I believe, and, and um, let me be biased towards speaking for where I know best and where I will not mince my words, where it is the seafaring industry. When it comes to the seafaring industry, I feel that the doors haven't quite been open widely for us. We, we find the countries, I was reading The Economist the other day, and we see there the are countries that women are not allowed by the law to be captains of ships. We see that there are ships that say that they do not have facilities for women to, to work on board their ships, which, and, and then we see that the, they have an equal pay. Women have an equal pay. We see maternity laws that are not, are not favorable to women. So if you're going to build all these blocks and yet tell us to go to the seafaring industry, I, I don't think we're going to be on the same page. So I think these are the issues that we need to address first and that need to be addressed at a higher level that go beyond us. 
but all we can do is tell our stories and be vocal about it for us to impose the change. Willis, you wanted to react to a question I asked Peter earlier. Oh, yeah, I wanted to just add something on what Peter had said. How do we make youth be interested? Yeah, I'm happy you mentioned part of it. But for us to be able to create the interest of youth, youth participation in the blue economy at whichever point of that value chain, it, there, is, there is that critical importance of all players to work together. Because as it is now, some may say there's a government work. Some may say seafarers association. So in the moment you talk about blue economy, fingers start pointing maritime, youth, uh, transport, you see. So the issue is we should be able to have a concerted effort by all players, government, governmental and non-governmental, financing agencies. We have so many blue economy opportunities like at the coast where I, where I am based as a regional coordinator. But how many youth can be able to access facilities to invest in that particular type of economic productivity? And what does the investing include? More in, than just investing the will include one, mm -hmm. capacity. How do we build their capacity? Number two, how are we able to ensure they get the right equipment? How are we able to ensure that these youth who are investing in the blue economy, like at the coastal region, how do they engage? How do they engage with other government agencies? I'm very happy the other day uh, the head of state uh, launched the Coast Guard. It's a very big plus in the right direction because these are efforts together with the pri pri private sector, financing agencies, they can come in, finance, and then at the same time, they be able to build the capacity of this youth to participate. Fair enough. The conference, the Blue Economy Conference, is happening at a time when there is also a growing climate change skepticism. Yeah. Uh, we understand the case of Donald Trump, the far right in Europe. Does this dint the work of people who are working within the blue economy industry? Um, one thing we have to understand, uh, two months ago there was a climate change conference where they actually, again, came up with a very shocking announcement that in 18, no, 12 years, the world will be inhabitable, will go up by three degrees. In 12 years, I will be, what, 36, 38? Uh, in 12 years, some of us will not even be 30. So it's a very serious thing that we need to address when you have world leaders like President Donald Trump and others from the far right in the Europe denying climate change. It can be uh, a lack of political will. But we have the majority of uh, our international leaders believing in climate change, believing that it is an issue to be addressed, and the political will is there. But it's up to us, the majority, which is the young people, to actually s raise our voices and say, this is a major issue. If we don't deal with climate change, whether it is the blue economy or the green economy, Which or my own economy, economy fair enough. there will be as, no as, world. As we conclude, uh, let me get to Elizabeth. Elizabeth, probably a lady who's watching this show this morning has interest in blue economy, the maritime industry. What's your message to her? Of course, you are Kenya's first, just to recap, female marine pilot. Um, what I would, I would tell the, the young ladies out there is that they should not necessarily feel that they are crippled by their gender. I think all opportunities that are open to men are open to, to women, and so they just need to dare to dream, and they'll be unstoppable and just have the focus. We look at an MOU that has recently been signed between the government and the second largest Mediterranean shipping company, second largest shipping company, Mediterranean shipping company. It opens so many opportunities for young people to tap into. But also, another thing I'll also tell the, the young women out there and the youth generally, is that how many of you have registered to attend this blue economy? If, because if you speak of not knowing of the opportunities, what effort have you taken towards knowing the opportunities? Let me give Willis the last of words. Uh, what should we expect out of the Blue Economy Conference? Out of the Blue Economy, there are so many great things that we expect out of it. One, the young people will be able to identify because we are going to work together, we'll discuss, and out of it, opportunities for investment and participation in the Blue Economy will be clear. Number two, there will be the linkages between the various players within the blue economy, the youth, financing agencies, government agencies, private agencies, to be able to invest and reinvigorate that particular area so that it can be able to earn much. And uh, the la last but not, not least is that that participation in the blue economy, we are looking at a scenario whereby finally an action plan will come out of it, an action plan that will be able to steer 
our country forward with everybody on board so that we can be able to realize the dream of that blue economy. And Fe if you may allow me, mm -hmm. if you may allow me, because you, this is the last chance you said you are giving okay, us. Okay, go ahead. Uh, let me express my appreciation. From the moment I walked into this studio, I have not been attended by somebody above 35. Thank you. That is a very big plus. Thank you very much, yeah. and thank you for the organization. Uh, thank you. Let me give as well Peter uh, a chance to... Thank pause. you. Um, remember, we have to understand that there is a youth side event happening on the Sustainable Blue Economy Conference on the 28th at University of Nairobi Taifa Hall. Uh, this youth event is significant because it's the only youth event in the Blue Economy Conference, giving the opportunity to the youth. And my takeaway is very simple. There's three parts. One, on the part of the older generation. They are opening a space, and they need to open a space for young people to come in, to empower them, to give them a platform. Two is on our generation, the youth. We must be hungry enough to chase those opportunities given to us. And last but not least, we must reach back and help those who are scared to spread their wings and fly and, in, and empower them, because that's the only way we'll make it. Peter Moll, CEO of World Leaders of Today, founder of Stand, Stand Out, Shout Out. Uh, Willis Ayub, Regional Coordinator for Youth Affairs Coast Region, and of course Elizabeth Wakesho against the tide. She is the first Kenyan female marine pilot. Gentlemen and lady, many thanks for making time for us Thank you. Thank and you making sense, more importantly, of Thank blue you economy. Thank you. Thank you. And let's move on with more news. At least 1,400 traders in Karatina have been allocated business 